Well, welcome everybody to this week's installment of Midrash and the Parsha. We are going to be exploring a Midrash that connects both to this coming week's Parsha, Parsha Tzedah, as well as to the Megillah. So for the title, this is Prayer. So there will be a very strong Shila connection in this week's Midrash. So let's get to it. So Parsha Tzedah is one of those Parsha that often people tend to um, Glance over because it's very, it's always falls out around Purim. So you're too busy um, thinking about Purim to actually properly look at the Parsha. So what happens with, with, with Truma? All right, the Truma and Tzava talk about how to build the Beit Dash, as well as a lot of technical, a lot of the more technical aspects um, about how the Kohanim looked and how they would end up serving in the Beit in the Mishkan and eventually the Beit Dash. So as part of their inauguration into being Kohanim, so we see the, the an opening passage being the Zeha Devar Asher Tasar Lahem Akadesh Tama Chayli Bekach Par Echad Bekar Beilim Shnayim Tamimim. So we see one of the first kerbanot given to Ben Israel to bring after they bring after they've done the korban Pesach. The first the first korban being brought in the in the Mishkan is. The one to, to dedicate the Kohanim as Kohanim for Aaron and his sons, and it says Zeha Davar said, This is the thing that you shall do. So the question that the Midrash is going to come and ask is: This is a very strange phrase to have. The Zeha Davar. Right? Why does it start with that? It's it's why are we using double a double pronoun to start off some of the first korbanot that are going to be given in the in the Mishkan. It seems a little strange. So to that, that's where our Midrash is about to build off. Okay, Zeh Devar, why is that there? So there's a whole list of different reasons in the Midrash. We're gonna focus on one of them. Okay, so what, so what is, as you'll, as you'll, as you'll notice, the, 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 Hebrew, the Hebrew for a, a new, a new, a new um, interpretation is Devar Acher, something else, which works quite well with our Zeh Devar. So now, why does it start with the Zav Devar? So, so, I'm, so I'll, I'll read the Midrash in English, and if anybody wants to chime in at some point, everybody will hopefully have an opportunity to. Not to worry, there's there's plenty of uh, segments, some of which have multiple people speaking, so don't worry, everybody will get a chance. Another explanation for Zav Devar, this is referring to the Puzzle in Hosea of Take with your words and return to God. So this is so. What does that mean? So so how does doing korbanot or anything else bring you closer to God? So the explanation comes from a pasuk in Tehillim, or actually two pasuk in. Our two first halves of sukkim in. To him, the full, the full, the full, the full version of which I have for you in English over here. I walked upon the climates and circle all your altar, um, God, and to voice things aloud and to tell of all of your miracles. So one might think that this, that the puzzling to Helen is referring to simply Kurbano, but actually it's referring to prayer as well, and that's what, and that's why it says. One might also offer dust bowls and rams, but the verse instead says, last me have a cult of God to give thanks aloud. Shifting the focus from what you may think it is of offering a korban to being voicing thanks to God out loud. So it's not, not only important is, so you don't really think the only thing that matters is the korban. The answer is it can also be fulfilled via prayer, which is important because the way to make because until now the way that the Jew that everybody has been connect, communicating with God wasn't simply by offering korban, but had been through had been through primarily through prayer, not through korban. So, so here, so so now we're gonna have a back and forth. So who here would like to be? Who here would like to take the role of B'nai Israel, and who here would like to take the role of God? Uh, I have a terrible complex. I'll be God. Which one is? All right. Okay. So you're gonna go second. Who'd like to go first and be B'nai Israel? <laughs> I 
So I'll be I'll be B'nai Israel then. Okay. So accordingly, the Jews say, Ribon Hala, master of the universe, leaders lead, the leaders sin and they and bring and they bring and bring a korban an offering and it atones for them. Mashiach, the Kohen or the Nasi sins, they can bring a korban and it atones for him. We we have no korban. That's me. He said to them, and if all the congregation of Israel stray, and the matter is hidden from the eyes of the community, and they are guilty of doing one of the negative commandments of what is God. It? Of God. Okay. Of God. Yudkei Vodkei. Then, what is it? then if the sin guilt for which they sin becomes known, the community shall offer a bull of the herd as a sin offering. This is God but we are poor, and we have not what to bring for Korbanot. So he, God, says to them, words I request, as it is said, take with you words and return to God, and I annul all your misdeeds. There we go. Okay, so what is the point of this back and forth here? So but the point of the back and forth is that until now, all right, so we see, we're, we're, as we'll see throughout the you know the rest of Sefer Shemot as well as Midrash, that there's a very heavy focus on bringing korbanot as a way to atone for your misdeeds. But there's sometimes there are things you do wrong that don't have a korban, that don't have an offering that can make make amends with God. And the question then is, well, either if there is no korban, or if you can't afford to bring the the proper offering, how can you make amends with God? Is there any way to do tshuva without it? And the answer here is prayer. Prayer. Words I request. Right. From Hosea. So but the question is, so what, but again, we view this as, of course, this being the case. So why does Michigan go out of its way to explain this to us? So part of that is because during the time of the first base of Agdash, as well as in the same as Medish as well, the Jews have the have the, the thought process that as long as they can bring a korban, they can bring the proper offering, it doesn't matter what they do. They think as long as they bring the korban, we're good to go. The only problem is that they forget that bringing the korban isn't the whole isn't isn't the whole, only thing that's necessary. You also need to verse with words and pray to God and, and ask forgiveness for what you have done wrong. So here it's going to emphasize not just the act of bringing the offering, but also what the words that go along with it are perhaps even more important than the offering itself, which is quite a hard thing to swallow for the Jews. So now, as we, as I mean, nowadays we're like, of course, but back then that wasn't quite that, that wasn't quite that wasn't quite a, 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 quite a given. Okay, so the question is, so what do we mean by speaking to God? Okay, so, so what what is exactly meant by that? So here's the so here so here's the midrash gives it one option. What are these dvarim they're supposed to be saying? What is this type of prayer that you're supposed to be using? So now we continue on with before of God and B'nai Israel. So so right so so I guess God goes first. These words are none other than the Divrei Torah, as it is said. These are the Devarim that Moshe spoke to Al Yisrael. All right, so that's how we know that it has to be words, like that if Torah is are the way you're supposed to pray, using words of Torah. Right. So they said to him, we do not know. Right. So that's what Yisrael said, but we don't know. Like, we don't know any Torah. Like, what, how, how are we going to do this? So? Actually, we didn't have an art scroll. So he said to them, weep and pray before me, and I accept it. Your ancestors, when they were enslaved in Mitzrayim, it wasn't for prayer that I redeemed them. As it is said, the Bnei Israel groaned from the work and cried out. Right, when Bnei Israel, right? So, what? How did they pray when they were when they were in Egypt? They did it. There was no words. They screamed. They, they cried. They cried, and that's what the truest form of prayer is, which is um, often invoked. Um, around the time of Rosh Hashanah for why we why we use the shofar, because it's the voiceless cry, right? No words, just pure 
um, prayer. So th this is this is one option. So right. So then another question. Now we're, now we're going to um, second. Looks like the formatting here came out a little. Okay, just going to adjust the. Looks like everything shifted in font size on me here. Moment. Yeah. Okay. I'm just really sure. Yeah. I don't know what happened here, but it's like all the font size is increased. So I'm going to. Uh, Let me just make it a little bit smaller so we can all actually see it. Sorry about that. Pretty sure it was, re it was readable earlier today. Um, my apologies. Let's get rid of people for now, actually. Okay. Moment. Okay. This one is. Another issue. My apologies for that. It reset. I had them all, they were all much smaller font, and then I just decided to like the way again. So, about that. Okay, now we're all back to the rest of them are all back to, are, are all in legible size. So, and we are good to go. Okay, sorry about that. Back, back. To, um, here we are. So what? So when we said, so one option we had is wordless prayer of of, of Jews screaming out to God in their Egypt. But is there any other times when we when we when the Jews pray uh, pray to God, and how do they do so? So we're gonna now we're gonna go through gonna run through Jewish um, Jewish history a little bit and we're gonna give some examples of when this occurred. So the first one was in the days of Yehoshua. So it wasn't for prayer that I made miracles with them, as it is said, Yehoshua tore his garment and fell on his face before the ark of God in until the evening. So what did he say? And then what did God respond? Hold out the spear which is in your hands towards the city of Ai, for I give it to you in your hands. So notice here what that what he had done is he tore his garment and fell on his face. And that's what is, is afterwards why he's given the, the way that he'll be able to beat Ai. It's simply because of his tearing his garment and falling on his face in prayer before uh, the Aron of God. So now, and then it goes through other examples. Uh, we see in the days of the judges, as it happens when Benes, uh, when Benes well cried out to God on account of Midian. Again, prayer being the operating um, action that the Jews do that leads to the eventual redemption. Similarly, in the days of Shmuel, it was not prayer that I heard. Sorry, this is, this is meant to be said in the. I had heard their prayer, but it was, was it not in prayer? But these are words. These are these aren't prayers that have words, right? Shmuel cried out to God on behalf of Bnei Israel, and then God responded to him. That's the same for Shmuel. And certainly, we have that when that when the men of Yerushalayim, even though they had angered God and God had been bringing down fire upon, uh, and they had been bringing down enemy after enemy in the time of Yirmiyahu, because they were before me, I had mercy on them, as it says, for the, for thus said God. Sing out joy to Yaakov. And how do we know that? And, and again, this is a major theme throughout all of your Miyahu that, oh, I request for you not sacrifices and not karbanot, but words. As it is said, mm -hmm. and this, then this goes all the way back to our first verse that we quoted of David that I wash my hands with cleanliness, not intending to make an offering, but to voice thanks aloud, for I am, th for I am thankful to you for your great Torah. Right, the whole point of this whole section is to focus on, even though we're building the Mishkan and the, the Kohan that we're going to be serving there and helping you bring your Kabbalah out, that's not the point. The point is to pray to pray to God, even if you don't know, what, even if you don't have any precise words, and even if you're not able to offer any Kabbalah out, the important thing is that you do so by cleaning your hands first and by being sincere in voicing your thanks for God. Not a focus on what you give as your contribution, rather on the fact that you prayed to God. Right? 
Make sense? Okay, seeing some nods, good. Okay, I see, oh, I guess it's repeated, that's why that looks like that. Okay, fine. Okay, we just, we just went through this. Okay, so I guess, I guess it was the duplicate class. I guess I have, okay. I guess I see what happened, one of the slides, okay. We just went through this, there was doubled up. Okay, that was one option. Again, the, what is that, the var? The point of the words being said, the var is to remind us of of Hashem. To remind us that it's not just the korbanot that are going to be offered in the Mishkan that are important, but the words we say there as well. So now there's another option within explaining what Chumachan Dori means. So, so, again, this is, so this is a little bit different explanation. So what do we mean by, by, by take a few words and by Zadavar? So, so what is being chosen is the question. So what are so what are being what what is God? So what are we are is being chosen? So here we have Moshe said, God chose an abode for the for the God of your meaning God who preceded all others chose Ben Israel. So this is the nation of Israel in whose merit the world was created and continues to exist. Okay, so this is again yeah, this this phrase in itself is a little bit of a non sequitur, but it'll hopefully make a little more sense once we keep reading the next part of the midrash. And this one, we'll come back to this. Okay. So what? So, this, yeah. So like Zed Zed the Var. Most said this is the nation of Israel, so it's. So when you say Zed Devar, it's just a reference to, to the nation of Israel. Yes, that, be, that the only the reason why the Kohanim are getting their job is because of the Jews. Right. Meaning, it's not the merit of the Kohanim that allows them to become Kohanim; rather, the merit of the rest of Bnei Israel, upon which will allow them to become the Kohanim for everybody else. Right. Got it. Okay. Yep. So this is a little, that's again a little bit a little cryptic, but that's the this part of the midrash. The next part will hopefully be a little, little clearer. So now, now we're getting to how all of a sudden now we're going to shift into the connection between Parsha Tzava and Torah. Okay, so this is based on 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 Sukim and Sefer Darim, where we are. Where God, where we, where God predicts, or yeah, where Moshe is giving his final blessings to Bnei Israel, and and we are reading a fulfillment of the Nebuot given by Moshe in the time of in the time of the Megillah. Okay, so here's so this is Rabbi Huda Nasi's explanation for the parallels of the end of the end of the Torah with what happens with Megillah story. With 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 uh, in Shushan. Okay, so who would like to read Rabbi Yehuda Nasi? I'll read. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi said, "Banish from from before you an enemy. This is Haman, as it says, the adversary and enemy." And why is he called an adversary and enemy? Rather, he is an adversary of God above and an enemy below on earth, an adversary to fathers and enemy to sons, adversary to me, Esther, and enemy to you, Ahasuerus. He said, destroy, these are Haman's sons. Okay, so this is, right, so this is saying how God, when his blood, again, Moshe, Moshe, through prophecy, giving his last blessing to Ben Israel, is referring to it ends up being fulfilled in the time of the Megillah. Okay, and note that they're, we're quoting the parallel words that that we from Dvarim, and then when they come up in the Megillah as well. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense so far. Okay. Yeah. So now we're going to continue on, continue on with this Sukim and the Dvarim, and and seeing how they how they continue being fulfilled. 
Okay. So next mm -hmm. we have thus Israel about again. This, this, in case you're wondering where the, where the town of Anyaku gets its name, the answer is from this pasuk in Zarim. So thus Israel dwells in safety. Untroubled is Jacob's abode. There is no aim except prophecy, as it says. For the Lord has spread over uh, over you a spirit of deep sleep and has shut your eyes, the prophets. So this means that there's something prophetic involved with whatever the word ayin is mentioned. Okay, so this is again part of the basis for why we for why that whole section in Zvarim is a prophetic section. Okay, so now, so that is, that was, that was what we just read. That was Rabbi Yudha Nasi's uh, um, uh, drasha, connecting, connecting that section of Zarim and Zava to the Megillah. Now we're going to go to the opinion of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Okay, so Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Well, I can do that also. Okay, so Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Thank you. Is that okay, Wayne? Yeah, okay. Uh, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel said that God's love for Israel is so great that he changes the natural order of creation for them. God brings a man from the heavens and brings up dew from the earth, as it says, when the fall of dew lifted and under heaven's dripping dew. Okay. Fairly straightforward. God changes the whole world for the sake of the Jewish people. With the man and the dew. Right, with the man and the dew in the in the midbar. So, so, so and now as we continue on continue on interpreting the Sukim, now we are going to continue on seeing how that praise continues on to the Israel as as time as time as time continues continues moving moving stretching forward. Okay, so since Moshe saw the reward for the righteous, he said to them, O happy Israel, who is like you? The people delivered by the Lord. So what does that mean? People that served God. So now we're, we're going to see three phrases that might sound familiar from uh, davening. So let me know if, they, if um, or well, one, the other two might not be quite as familiar. Because um, we tend not to, we, we tend not to quote them except on uh, Yom and Orion. So here we go. So first one, it's so good. There's, for the for, the first one is when we again we're gonna we're parsing the, okay. um, the, the we're gonna be parsing the 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 psukim in in Zvarim, um, where it said of the where the verse it said Magen Azracha, right? You're protecting shield. So who is that amongst the Avot? That is the corresponds to Avram, who 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 we see Asher Magen Zaracha Biadacha, who protects from enemies with your hands, which we invoke every day when we say the bracha of Magan Abraham in Shemona Esrei. Right? right? In the silence of Midah. Next we have Vashar Sarev Gavotecha that the sword is your triumphant. So that is corresponding to Yitzchak who stretches next out against the blade by the Akedah. Right? That's the Midrash saying how, how, how uh, Yitzchak basically even though Abraham didn't really want to do it Yitzchak is stretching his neck out. I'll leave it there. Uh, for more on that, that's a share in the Kata, which is, I know, a little crucial. The point being is that he was that willing to sacrifice himself for God. The, the next we have that of Yaakov, right? Where it says that Yikahashu Oivechalaf, that your enemies shall cring, be cringing before you. So this corresponds to Yaakov, as it, as it says that Asav went um, to the land of Edom in fear of his brother. So there's that there we see how each of these each of the Sukim were fulfilled. So we're, we're getting to the Megillah part. So okay. And then the next Pasuk says, and you shall tread on their backs. So when is this fulfilled? Right? So far we dealt we dealt with how the Sukim, the, the Navua of Moshe is fulfilled in the, by the Avar. But well, that's kind of already happened in the past. But what about the future? So that we see being fulfilled in the time of, of when we step on the when we step on Haman in, in Megillah. 
So who'd like to read the Megillah section? Volunteer, Ma, you got it? Okay. Or Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. Oh. Elaine? Where, where should I start? And, and you shall you? tread on their backs. And you shall tread on their backs is fulfilled in the day of Mordechai, as it says, Haman took the clothing and the horse. Who, what caused Mordechai to enjoy his greatness? Let us say, because he prayed at all times, as it says, Mordechai knew all that was going on. Once Mordechai saw himself in greatness, he did not become haughty and did not stop praying. Instead, Mordechai returned the same way he was before. Okay, so now we're seeing what, in what merit the Jews were saved during Purim. Notably, if you look through all of Me uh, Megillah Esther, you will not see a single time the word prayer. Except, I mean, the closest thing is we have is when um, Esther is Hitzchanim before Achashverosh. But we never see the word anywhere, any direct references to God or praying to God, which is quite troubling. So the question is, so so how how is that possible? So the answer is is that the so as we see here is that the Midrash is seeing that there's a lot of actions that look very much like prayer, and that and it doesn't need to tell us that because well, if it looks like he's if he's sitting down in, in sackcloth, then odds that what does that mean that Mordechai is doing? He means he's praying. People don't just sit in sackcloth for fun, right? You don't you don't you don't just sit there mourning. With your head held low, if you're like you know for nothing, obviously he's praying. And we see that throughout the story, he keeps returning to his location by the by the gate of the city, which is also by the gate of the king's king, of the king's of, of the king's court, which is and the and the and the shara ear, the gate of the city is often a place that is a place for prayer. So then, as the midrash continues, um, so. So in terms of the fulfillment of certain prophecies and curses. So here we go. So now, so again, this is part of how we know that what was going on before was all was involving prayer as well. Okay, so who would like to read the uh, final comeuppance that we give to uh, Haman in the Midrash? I'll go. So the Lord your God will inflict all these curses, not upon you, but upon the enemies and foes who persecuted persecuted you, so so you should you so you should you stop pray, so should you stop praying? Of course not. Rather, what does the next verse say? You, however, will again heed the Lord, just like Mordecai did, as it says. Then Mordecai returned to the king's gate. After Mordecai was paraded around Shushan by Haman, that he returned to wearing sackcloth and fasting. That is why it says. Take with you words, the Borim, and return to God. Here too it says, this is it, Zehad Devar, since Hashem was appeased by Aaron through prayer. As it says, moreover, the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time by the golden calf. Okay, so 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 what is going so what is going on here? What, what do we see as we're coming back to? I knew that whole long story. What's the point? We, we traveled through Jewish history. We started with the Avot. We mentioned about how God was with them. We spoke about how the Jews were in Egypt. They were only saved through one thing. Similarly, we saw it happening in the time of, in the, time of, the, of the judges, the time of Shmuel, the time of David, the time of Yirmiyahu and Yishev and Yishalayim, as well as the time of uh, Mordechai and Esther. What is what ultimately ends up saving the Jews? So his prayer. So even though Mordecai was paraded around the city and being honored, he went back to sackcloth and fasting and praying. Uh, after Correct. That. Right. No matter where you wind up in life, and no matter how whatever greatness you are, that you are still always supposed to be connected or turned back to God through matter of prayer. Which is also interesting. You know that who is that? Who is the source of much of our prayer that we use, that we that we say every day? Kana. Kana is one. And who else? Think in terms of a volume of verses stated every day. Who wrote most of them that we say every day? 
Um, David with Tehillim. David with Tehillim, right? So, and and who was he to write writing that? David, David Amela, right? King David, right? He wasn't a nobody. He was very much a powerful, famous man, respected by all. Yet he's the one who sat down and wrote all these prayers to God. So there comes no surprise that paralleling David Amelech, we have here too, we have Mordechai, who is, despite the fact that he is and it ends up rising to a power, to a level of power, it's quite similar to that of a king, albeit second to the king, he never stops praying throughout. Which also is important for us in terms of what led to our own being chosen to be, to being, to being, and the, uh, the whole, and all the sentence becoming Kalani. It wasn't simply because of their greatness that led them to be chosen. Rather, their greatness comes because of their actions, right? Because our own was, is involved in prayer. That's why, and as well as because. God it only ends up agreeing to have Aaron reign being Aaron thanks to prayer, because again, God could have chosen to have after Abhidhega. It could have been that be it. But instead, right, Moshe's interceding on and praying to God on Aaron's behalf, as well as on B'nai Israel's behalf, is what allows them to both remain being B'nai Israel and being God's nation, as well as for Aaron being able to become the God, I mean, instead of becoming God's priest. The exact same reason, right? It's that through the power of prayer is what allows the Jews to overcome quite difficult situations. And not only did it help them throughout the time in the Midbar and throughout the end of the time of the of Yeshua, Shoftim, and Shmuel, and Balachim, but it also very much helped them in the time of the Megillah as well. And that's why. We're focusing on prayer heading into this coming part. Okay, I think that's uh so that's a wrap. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them. If not, I hope we'll, we'll hopefully be seeing everybody on Wednesday for our final installment in supernatural Judaism. Um, and if I don't see you then, I wish everybody a a Kurim Sameach. Forum Sameach, thank you very much. Forum Sameach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chaim. Thank you. Good night.